What does your impact look like right now as an educator? I want you just to think about this for a minute and what your answer might be. And then I want you to ask yourself, what are you doing to amplify your impact? Today, we're going to talk about how do we take your impact as an educator from one classroom to many by becoming a modern education influencer. Now, I do want to spend some time just really unpacking what I mean when I say the word influencer. Some of you might have just heard this and you're immediately going, nope, this conversation definitely is not for me. And if that is you today, I want to encourage you just to stick with me here for a bit and potentially shift your mindset around this. For many educators, when I say the word influencer, the initial reaction that I tend to get is this look of horror. And the reason why I get this reaction is because for many of us, when we think about becoming influencers, this idea of putting ourselves forward, it tends to generate a bit of recoil. And the reason it does this is because when we have seen others try to build their influence, they've tried to build it in an ego-driven, hey, look at me kind of way. And there are many challenges when building your influence this way, with the number one challenge being that it's completely inauthentic. So instead of bringing students in with this strategy, you're in fact turning students away. And so I want to be really clear today when I talk about becoming a modern education influencer, the goal is not to see who can have the most TikTok followers. I promise you, I am not asking you to become an Instagram influencer. I promise you, that is not it. Again, this is not about ego. The goal is to drive trust through impact at scale with the work that you are doing every single day with your students. The goal is to take your impact from a one-to-one -one classroom setting to a one-to-many. Now, I want to dive in first in the new media landscape and, and really what we're seeing today and why your influence as an educator matters more than it ever has before. In today's environment, it is increasingly hard to gain the public's trust as an educational institution. In fact, recent research from Gallup shows that trust and confidence in U.S. institutions across the board is at an all-time low. So as a result, I believe in order to gain the public's trust, institutions must move their faculty out from behind the scenes and put them at the forefront in more forward-facing positions as impact-driven influencers. Now, if you are an educational leader in this room, you must take note of this strategy, and you must equip your educators with these tools. I have seen this strategy executed really well the past few years with higher education. The universities that have been able to lead with professors at the forefront of what they are doing have been able to leverage this type of strategy to bring in top-tier talent and to garner top-tier resources for their classrooms. And so as a leader, you must figure out how you can help your educators build their impact online to scale that. Ultimately, they become a Trojan horse for your institution and allow you to close that trust gap for your organization. Now, if you are an educator in the room, the mindset that I want you to have behind this is I want you to think of yourself as an on-ramp, as you're building your impact back to your educational institution and the impact that you're driving there as a whole. One of the biggest shifts in the media landscape that I have seen is we, the general public, are moving our attention away from legacy media, like the CNBCs, the CNNs, the Fox News, and we're now moving our attention toward 
individuals that we perceive as more trustworthy, knowledgeable, and entertaining, such as podcasters, YouTubers, bloggers. And so when we think about how do we create impact and all the noise that is going on in social media, if we are leading with our institutions online, we are losing. But if we are able to position educators at the forefront of what we're doing, people that we know and we trust, we're able to scale that impact. And so as you start to think about how do you approach this, I want you to ask yourself, how can you create content that influences your students the same way you have been influenced by content from media outlets like the New York Times? And I want to share just a quick example of how this has been successful in the education space. I had an educator named Carrie, and she came to me because she had started a side project, and she was creating videos to help high school and college students with their English homework. And so what she did is she came to me and she said, how do I grow a brand? How do I grow my brand to reach more students? And what we were finding is her viewership right now was inconsistent, but she was getting good feedback. And so what we did is we dove into her video analytics. And what we found is it wasn't about the length of the video or where she posted the video or even when she posted the video. For her, success was determined by the subject matter of the video. And we found that the videos where she focused on a summary and analysis of classic literature those were the ones getting the most engagement. And so Carrie completely shifted her strategy, and she focused in on creating those videos. And now she has the opportunity to educate, on average, 30,000 students a video. And in fact, Carrie has only been doing these 20-minute videos on the side here and there for just a little over two years. So as you're thinking about this, if you have the same mindset that Carrie had when she started this journey, which is, hey, I think I missed the boat. It's way too late. There is no way I can be successful now. I should have started posting 10 years ago. What I want to encourage you with and what I want you to think about is there are not many educators who are willing to go out there and execute this type of strategy and do it consistently. So if you were able to do this, you have the ability to be tremendously successful. And so as you're thinking about this, what I want you to focus in on is if you are ready to get past this hump around the mindset of becoming an influencer and you're ready to get started, I want to focus on how we do that. For a lot of educators, when they think about their content strategy, the knee-jerk reaction is, should I start a podcast? Should I start a YouTube channel? Should I be on LinkedIn? And the much more important question that I want you to ask first is not where, but what. What type of content is your audience going to find most valuable? Your content strategy online is probably more simple than you think. The way that I want you to think about it is if you were the editor of your own textbook, and there are three categories that fall into that textbook. The first category is what we call you-driven content. This is the content that connects back to your intellectual property. It includes your journey, your stories, and your framework. This is where you're able to bring in entertainment and your personality into your virtual classroom. The most important thing when it comes to you-driven content is to be more of yourself. There's a huge misconception that you have to come off in this category of content as super formal or somebody that you're not, and that's completely not the case. The thing that you do want to avoid in this category of content is you don't want this to be the only category that you're putting out there. If you-driven content is all you're putting out on social media, it's kind of like you're filling your textbook with opinions only or your research only. And so when putting out you-driven content online, I want you to keep this to about 15 to 20% of what you're putting out there. Now, the next category is what we call news-driven content. 
This is all about focusing on what your students are paying attention to right now. There are two subcategories to this. The first one is what we call calendar-driven content. So it's focusing on the times of year that your students are paying attention to certain things. So Carrie, for example, she would post videos on certain books during times of year she knew it was popular to cover that in classroom curriculum. Now the other subcategory here is what we call headline-driven content. Headline-driven content is all about focusing on what is going on in the world today that your students are paying attention to, and how can you help provide analysis on this. This is where you bring in breaking news, new research and studies, and you teach on it. Now, the last category of content, for a lot of you, this is going to be the most important in terms of scaling your reach, scaling your impact but it's also going to be the most fun. And this is what we call peer-driven content. This is all about curating content from other experts and other educators. What I want you to do with this category of content is I want you to start an interview series on your social media channel. This can be video, audio, or written. And I want you to focus in on inviting other educators to come alongside you in your virtual classroom and co-educate. There are two things that happen when you do this. Number one, you enhance the dynamic of your classroom by bringing in another educator. But number two, whenever you post that video live on social media, that educator that you invite on, they're going to want to find a way to reciprocate. And they're going to go and share that with their classrooms and their network, ultimately broadening your reach. And so as you look at this type of strategy, as you're posting content online, I don't want you just to post videos and sit back and hope that they go viral. And maybe some of that's going to happen for a few of you. What I want you to do is think about how you can curate content from others and involve as many other people as possible to share this content alongside you in a win-win way. So as we're thinking about our what, something that's really important for you to remember when it comes to impact, you are the messenger, not the message. Now that we've talked about our what, I want to focus just a little bit on where. If you are trying to post on every social media channel out there, you are going to get nowhere. I want to encourage you just to post on one social media channel, maybe two, and become really good at driving value there. When it comes to figuring out your where on social media, it depends on who you are trying to impact. When it comes to the social media spectrum, there are three audiences that determine your focus. You're either focusing on reaching peers, parents, or students. So I want to start with LinkedIn. If you are focused on LinkedIn, you are focused on reaching primarily peers, administrators, other educators. It is not just the place where you go to look for a job anymore. It is essentially the online hub for all professionals out there. When we look at channels such as Facebook and Instagram, this is going to be where you're able to reach students and provide resources to those parents of students out there. And then the last one, when we look at channels such as TikTok, YouTube, this is primarily where you're going to reach your younger demographic of students. The thing to remember about these channels is they're very heavy video driven. In fact, YouTube recently did a study, and they said about 50% of Gen Z and millennials stated they could not go without video in their daily lives. And so if you can produce this type of content, you can be very successful on these platforms. But as you look at your where, I want you to take a step back, and I want you to focus on, on this side, what type of content do you enjoy creating? And then on this other side, I want you to focus on what does your audience enjoy consuming? And I want you to find that middle ground and live there. For some of you, that's going to be starting a LinkedIn newsletter. For others, that's going to be contributing to a private Facebook group for parents. But if I were to spend any more time today talking about social media features that you should utilize, this content would be irrelevant in a few months. And that's because social media is changing so quickly. 
And so as you start to build your impact online, it's important to remember your where is going to change throughout the years, depending on what is out there. So you must start first with your what. What type of content is your audience going to find most valuable? And then focus in on what you enjoy and being more of yourself. And remember at the end of the day, when it comes to impact, you are the messenger, not the message. So I want to take you back to the question that I asked earlier, and I want to just tweak it a bit. What could your impact look like as an educator? Becoming a modern education influencer is exactly how you amplify it. Thank you.